helping to resurrect an area known as the Artist's Village in downtown Santa Ana, a group of young eclectics with varying talents, still wet behind the ears with business savvy, go against the odds to open a dinner house nightclub. From the exterior, you could drive right past the building. It might not look like much from the outside, but inside the graffiti, the boom boxes, and the concrete floors are way arty. With a mouth-watering seasonal dinner menu and a super fun spattering of taste treats till 1 a.m., Chef Aaron's menu spans globally in flavors. The Crosby hits its target with young hipsters, starving artists, and uber foodies alike. You might come only for one of the unique cocktails or the best $5 grilled cheese sandwich you've ever had, or maybe your adventurous palate might delight in the upscale rotating chef's menu, or maybe just for the music and the energy of the Crosby's bustling late night. Find a reason, get out, get here, and expose yourself to your inner artist. Hey, we're here at the Crosby Nightclub and Dinner House in Santa Ana, California. Before we talk about the food and the restaurant, how did you find this place? Um, strangely, my boyfriend and I are actually kind of into the old crooner style music, a lot of Dean Martin, a lot of Bing Crosby. So I, I Googled crooner music, Bing Crosby, and up pops the Crosby in Santa Ana. It's actually half nightclub and half dinner house. So we were very pleasantly surprised to come here and find not bar food, had a meal, and came dancing to 40s and 50s music. You know, to me, this looks like, it almost reminds me of Cheers. You know, it's kind of a neighborhood eatery bar. And yeah, absolutely. Well, you're right, actually, because the owners have actually won uh, several awards for being the coolest local bar in Santa Ana. Let's start with the seared albacore. Mm. Mm. This is a beautiful piece of albacore. It's seared. It's, first of all, it's coated with sesame, black and white sesame seeds. It's pan-coated pan and, and pan-fried. It's um, served with pea shoots and a habanero plum sauce. I thought it was a brilliant dish with a perfect sweet and spicy medley to complement the And the, the shoots are really nice. They give you a nice little, almost like, like pea pods. Like, yeah, exactly. You eat a pea shoot and it tastes just it's like good. a pea pod. The next item was a roasted veggie plate, which was a really terrific uh, variety of vegetables, especially if you're watching what you're eating. This was a nice variety, king trumpet mushrooms, which they actually cut the heads off and just served the stems, which are really meaty and um, mild in flavor, really delicious. Then they had a uh, beautiful French uh, uh, haricot vert, which are just green beans, but uh, really nice and crispy. Shishito peppers, which are a Japanese sweet but mild pepper, not too hot. Uh, and then they served it over a sunchoke spread, which sunchokes are like a little baby Jerusalem artichoke. They're really funky looking, kind of purple. Uh, and they blended that with uh, some cream, some bay leaves, some peppercorn, uh, and then uh, plated it. So it's got a nutty flavor, almost like a water chestnut. And then they drizzled some uh, parsley oil over the top of it, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful dish. When I first heard that we we're going to do this dish, I thought, oh man, it's a foo foo dish. You want to eat the <laughs> vegetable? What am I? Uh, Wait, you love the vegetables. That's all you no. talk about is well, veggies. Well, but, but when I, I saw them, when I saw the passionate uh, love they put into the dish and how they, it was the biggest pair of tweezers I've ever seen. <laughs> how they just like an instrument, like a like in a hospital or the game operation. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. But the way they Don't played touch the side it, of the carrot, yeah. Me. But the way they played it, I mean, so much love and passion. It was and tasting the vegetables, it was delicious. You could it taste really the vegetables, and I, I actually enjoyed them. So, so I'm here by a vegetarian. <laughs> well, for one plate. Actually, the next dish is full of meat. It's a chimichurri torta. This was a braised, delicious braised pork shoulder with a jalapeno aioli, pickled onions, which I love. It was on a Mexican roll. Absolutely delicious. The raw onions really added a lot to it. Um, the flavoring of the uh, pork I thought was excellent. Cayenne, cinnamon. Just a really good dish, good the, sandwich. The, the pork was uh, almost kind of like a jerk style. They added the cinnamon and the allspice to it and a, a little bit of cayenne for some heat. Mm -mm -mm. And then they finished it and it was very crispy. I uh, love meat. On the finish. Now you said that the onions were raw. Actually, they were they were pickled. Oh, pickled, yeah. So um, that was a really nice uh, acidic marriage to the pork and the torta roll was just fantastic. And, nice uh, and grilled. As was the aioli, aioli on top. We gave it a little spicy, uh, spicy note, which I thought was delicious. Mm -hmm. Definitely a really tasty torta. I, I really enjoyed that. They're they're pretty good with the sandwiches here. Their breads oh, are definitely. nice. The next one that we had was the salmon cubano mm -hmm. sandwich, which is a just totally different twist on a cubano. Normally they use a, 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 a meat, but this one they used the salmon. Now this version
version had, came with the lock dart salmon, and this is an extraordinary piece of, of salmon from the Highlands in, in Scotland. It's really, really lean. It's a super fit fish. It's highly sustainable, really low volume farming, gives it a really super exclusive flavor. Um, it's hard to find, really buttery, really great um, you know, piece of a, you know, rich salmon that's um, worthy of the price. This was served on a French baguette, nice and crispy. They, you know, kind of grilled it. They also topped it with a marinated red onion. They put some uh, capers and a nice salty aioli spread over the top of the baguette. They also served it with a Havarti cheese, which they melted mm. on the top. So I'm not always a fan of the cheese and fish combination, but somehow this, this worked well. And you said it's from lo a Loch Dorte? Lock, lock that, Darte, Lock Darte. Does the Loch Ness so. Monster eat yeah. this oh, fish? Oh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> that's horrible. I don't know if it's from Scotland. It was, it was... Yeah, it's, um, it, that's where the manufacturer or the, or the breeder, or however you call it, the farming of this fish okay. actually comes from. Next was a delicious one-half-pound Wagyu burger from New Zealand. It was incredible. What was nice about it, it came with sautéed mushrooms and onions, Munster cheese, it had a spicy ketchup on a nice bun with mixed greens, now, what made the burger so good, it had salt, peppercorns, Worcestershire sauce, and it had little butter cubes, they called it, inside the meat to give it a little fat, because Wagyu is pretty lean, mm -hmm. and it had liquid smoke, just a touch of liquid smoke to make the burger really come alive. Absolutely. And I think it's so good. I think all vegetarians will, if you eat this, you'll never eat oh my vegetable gosh. again. That's, that's, that's. It was so That's good. That's tragic to even <laughs> bring that up. But, just kidding, um, just kidding. Yeah. Next great meaty dish we had was the lamb. Now this was crusted in, um, they started off by crusting it with crushed pumpkin seeds, which I thought was really unusual. Uh, and then they, they just seared it and sliced it up in, in threes and they served it. What made the dish was they served it in a Luxardo cherry glaze, which oh. Luxardo cherries are actually a, a manufacturer in Italy um, where it's the only place you can find the Marasca cherry. Now these are heavily used in the pastry uh, for you know pastry ingredients, cooking and baking. But I think that he found the silver lining of this dish with uh, by using the Luxardo cherries because they're they're crunchy and they're black and they're juicy and they're sweet and they're d just amazing. And he mixed the sauce with a little bit of balsamic vinegar to go you know. So again, a lot of thought went into the discovery of the perfect ingredient to elevate that lamb and make it superb. Anything sweet goes with lamb. Absolutely, and a little heat too is great with it. Very good. Next is a very unique dish, it's lobster tacos. <laughs> now what they do is they get a mixture of cheeses, they grill it until it's real crisp, like a crepe, real thin. Mm -hmm. Then they add lobster claw meat to it, and then they put it on top of a flour tortilla, and on top of that is a tomatillo salsa, cucumbers, yogurt, pickled onions, and applewood smoked bacon, really crisp. Now this is a taco that you have to grab the whole thing and just bite into it. <laughs> it's really, really cheesy. Um, it's, it's delicious, but, rich as can be. I mean, there's so much cheese. Well, the strangest combination of almost inappropriately all rich flavors with the lobster cheese that typically don't go well together, lobster and cheese, and then the bacon. Uh, you know, again, all big, powerful flavors all mixed into one. But did you, did you love it? Oh, I loved it. And that's what this yeah. restaurant's all about. Almost every dish we had was unique, different, um, I don't think there's a restaurant in the Inland Empire that serves food like this. It's very unusual. Um, very so we had different. to drive all the way to Santa Ana to get Actually, a little taste. Actually, you do. Of no, no, just really, it's very different, exciting food. A lot of this food I would expect to find in a in a food truck, but you know, high-end food truck. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's cheap well, food, they, but they it's said, really uh, good. Uh, they say that the lobster tacos are one of the fan favorites for this restaurant, and I, you know, I'm I'm. I'm torn. I'm torn because I love all the ingredients. Just together, I'm not sure it was absolutely my favorite, but that's okay. Everything else definitely, definitely stands out. Speaking of fan faves, uh, one of the go-to items at this restaurant is the, it's called the Starving Artist's $5 cheese sandwich, <laughs> uh, grilled cheese sandwich. And, uh, you know, again, an, an, an impeccable combination of grilled, grilled bread and a, and a blend of delicious cheeses. You can't go wrong with it. $5 grilled cheese sandwich and a cup of little tomato soup on the side. Just a precursor to this dish though, I mean, while they do have a lot of great value um, items for uh, for the evening crowd and, uh, and late night, uh, this particular dish is going a few blocks down the street to a brand new restaurant called the Grilled Cheese Spot, which is a all-inclusive, all all-exclusive, all-cheese restaurant, which I can't wait for that to open coming up in the next month or two. And lastly, for dessert, we, we actually were going to have the um, Fruity Pebbles Creme Brulee, which hadn't quite 
set up by the time we were ready to eat it. But it just goes to show you the eclectic, interesting nature of the ingredients that they use. I mean, Fruity Pebbles, Cereal. how hip and, and tragically cute is that? Um, <laughs> instead, we have the Apple Turnover, which another item made fresh with puff pastry. They macerated Granny Smith apples and a little bit of brown sugar, butter, and apple cider vinegar. Uh, they scoop that all up, wrap it up into the turnover, and deep fry it. Serve it with a scoop of vanilla bean ice cream on the side. Can't go wrong with that. Um, also a little bit of a lemon caramel custard or a lemon caramel sauce on the side, which, uh, again, just made it a really strong dessert for me. That was probably the most simplest plain item they served here, I, I, which is nothing wrong with it. But that's just to show you how creative all the other dishes exactly. are. Exactly. I don't generally go for cooked apples as a, as a fave, but I thought that was just terrific. So all the food here is just um, really, really unusual. It's so unexpected because you're walking into a nightclub slash bar and you're really expecting to eat a pile of chili fries. And um, that absolutely is not what these guys are all about. And uh, Chef Aaron five maybe six years of culinary experience and i think that his food is like superbly creative and i love and appreciate the farm to table concept the freshness the organicness of his food and um, how much time and preparation he puts into each dish him his helpers the owners they have a lot of passion they seem to have a lot of fun working here yep. and it really shows in the food and the whole environment it's you know, I can kind of almost see how there might be a little bit of a disconnect when people walk into this place because you anticipate it being a nightclub or you anticipate it being a dinner house when in fact it's actually both. And the owners of this place are all really artistic. They're graphic designers, they're fashion designers, playwrights, uh, musicians. They even have a band called Free the Robots um, that travel around. I mean, they're just really interesting, groovy guys that decided to open up a restaurant. and. Um, while the focus is definitely on the music and the nightclub, it's also as well on, on the food. It's, it's definitely a, a growing sector of the restaurant. And they have music. Every day is different, so you have a whole variety here. You can come here every day and not be bored. Right. You know, I was a little bit intimidated because I'm not 20 anymore, and so um, <laughs> close. But uh, a little intimidated because, you, you know, you feel like you need to be a, a hipster. you got to be young and you got to wear the right clothes. But this is a place where, I mean, I could see families coming here. I could see, you know, people our age and older dancing to the 40s music, the 80s music, the 90s music right. and beyond. So I think it's um, exceptionally fun and I'm really proud of these guys. You know, they're, they're um, really creative and I'm proud of them for accomplishing what they did. And th again, they're taking another step in the restaurant business. They're taking this... $5 starving artist grilled cheese sandwich that they have and they're making it something special. And they've been here over four years, so that says a lot. So overall, this is really an unexpected fun place. My my personal favorites were the seared albacore appetizer I thought delicious, uh, the Cubana or the uh, chimichurri torta sandwich, and I like the apple turnover dessert. Right. Simple, but you liked it. <laughs> I like the torta, the burger, juicy, tons of flavor. I love the smokiness to that and the lobster tacos, very unique. And uh, I like cheese, what can I say? <laughs> it was really good. Excellent. Well, today I'm off to Chino to Escabeche Mexican Grill, and I'm gonna put Have some fun. music on for you, you hipster you. Oh. I am a hipster. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh. Mm.